Hey, William, I appreciate you being here, buddy. Hey, thanks, Joe, for having me. Yeah, so uh, USA Copiers. You would, you would think um, you know, one of the most boring businesses you could probably be in, but ever increasingly it's important for a business to get the job done in their office. And so, you know, I spent uh, eight years as a sales engineer, a national sales engineer for Xerox, and um, started USA Copiers back in uh, 2010. If you all remember, that was about two years just past the recession. <laughs> um, and people weren't buying anything really at that time, so it was a rough, rough road to hoe. But I grew up in the, uh, in the Xerox world. Um, you talk about uh, why people should get in business, and one, one of my suggestions is follow the passion. And I can remember back Amen. in those, those Great days statement. Yeah. when I was a sales engineer. Um, a sales engineer, by the way, is a geek with a personality that goes with the salespeople and kicks them under the table and tells them we can't do that. Hey, hey, hey. All right. So I was going to say you were describing Randy, but okay. All right. I was fighting words. So, that's, uh, so um, that's, you know, my background's in technology, and um, I, I used to tell people I love the smell of toner in the morning. What? But what, but what really? Okay. What, uh, that says a lot about your character, man. <laughs> well, you know? <laughs> what, what got me excited about um, you know technology was I, I fell in love with the Xerox technology. Few people know that Xerox invented all the things we use today in technology. They invented the network cable. They invented email servers. They invented the computer mouse. They invented the graphical user computer that you use today. That was was taken away was was with um, or by um, Steve Jobs, and he admits it in his book that he did it. And I fell in love with that innovation and, and the difference that set Xerox apart. And so I've been a dyed-in-the-wool Xerox fan ever since. Well, and, and it's interesting that you say that because I don't like your name. USA Copiers, you do <laughs> so much more, you know? I mean, yeah. it's no longer about copying a piece of paper, right? I mean, yeah. life has changed big time yeah, for, your, right. for your organization and the products and service that you sell. Well, it's, it's a connected device in the office now. Yeah, okay? absolutely. It's, it's also a point of intrusion, like Scott was talking earlier. I'll also tell you that it's, it's a highly dependent device. Like when we put a copier in someone's office, we depend on the network cable, we depend on the quality of electricity, we depend on the user's experiences, we depend on the IT support for that customer. There's all kinds of dependencies that are on that, and I know Scott goes So what you're saying too. is you sell a, a, a machine, then you blame it on Scott that it doesn't work. If we get an opportunity <laughs> to do so, yes. Yeah. And we just stand there every day and point fingers at each other okay. and nothing gets done. I, I want to make it perfectly clear. <laughs> you own USA Copiers, and I want you to change the name because <laughs> you, you well, do much more than copy. Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of research went into that name change, by the way. <laughs> so I, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. Uh, you know, we, we, we argue with people all the time that um, copiers are becoming somewhat of a commodity. But what will never become a commodity is service. And what we find in our industry, that the same service model that has existed for copiers for 50 years is still in place. So what separates USA Copiers that is we have moneyballed our service program. If you're familiar with that movie, yeah, Moneyball. I am. We sat down two years ago and we said, all right, Amazon is focusing on customer-centric type applications. What do you want? I want my packages right now. And I want it at the best price. So what we looked at and applied those things to the service side of our house and completely separated ourselves by miles from our competition. So the average response time in our industry is two to four hours, with the average first rate fix rate being 72%, and the average on-site response time is two days. We've narrowed that down now where our average response time is less than five minutes. Wow. Our first time fix rate is 92%, and our average um, on-site is within two hours within our, our roadmap. We pay our technicians, we recruit them from all over the country, take the top 3% of technicians, move them and their families to Charlotte, and then we turn around and we pay them 25% higher, and then we give them a commission off the sales side of the house. So everybody in the company is part of making a customer-centric approach to right. providing service for our customers. So let me ask you a question, Is and, and I, I'm trying to get to the business model, right? Sure. Because I know, obviously, I've got a small office, right? So I, I can just go get my 
my copier and scanner, uh, you know, at the Office Depot, or whatever, right? Right. Uh, but I know that the cost of that is not where they're getting me. It's in the actual print, the toner, right, Correct. in the ink. Is that the case in your business? Is that the model where you're actually making your money on the on the on the uh, back end of that? Walk me through the business model of of what you guys do. Sure. We, you know, we put a, a device in, a copier, and, you know, I've always said we don't, we don't lease or sell a copy to anybody that doesn't need it, number one. But right away, that device needs service. It has consumables in it. Right. And they want that thing to be up and running at all times. So we have what's called a full service maintenance agreement where they pay a low cost per impression and like a penny a page for black and white or six cents for color. And in turn, we warranty that machine to be up and working. All p- repairs, all work that's done on that copier, and all supplies are included in that model. Now, for us, it's a great business model for us because we have an annuity stream, a consistent right. income in our business, which in turn allows me to pay really good rates to our service tech and provide good service and just makes and, the whole thing work. And for a customer, I'm comfortable with that because I know I'm paying for what I'm getting. I'm getting good service this month, and I'm paying for good service this month. So I, I'm you know, comfortable cop- through the relationship. Copiers are like um, teeth because when you have a toothache, when do you want it fixed? <laughs> right, right. That's a good right? point. When, when you, it, that's the same with copiers. That thing isn't working, man, I tell you what. W- William, let, let, can, and I don't know if you can, but, but yeah. try and – if you can, for the, for the business people out there, walk me through how you set this great customer service. You listed four or five metrics that you use, right, sure. on your dashboard to make sure you're doing a good job for your customers. Right. Walk me through how you set that up. Can, can, can you do that? I mean, I know it's a tall tale, right? It didn't happen overnight, but... But that's not easy to do. I mean, in less than a minute, you describe some of the successes on how you treat your clients. And that takes years to put that together. Can, can you kind of help small business people out there that have service businesses right now that would love to get to that level of, mm-hmm. of uh, connection and trust with their clients? Well, that, that's, that's the challenge of every business. You know, your value propositions that you have and how you communicate to your, to your customers is a challenge of every single business that I know of. I know the first thing you have to figure out is walk in their shoes, walk in your customer's shoes, and ask yourself, what do they want? Again, that's the Amazon customer-centric model. Right. And so we did that because so many of our, um, our competitors have been in business for 50 years. And they do things. Why? Because that's the way we've always done it. <laughs> right, right. Okay. We took that and just blew it apart. We sat down in a war room uh, two years ago and said, we have to do this completely different. We stripped it down from top to bottom, and we started with the why. The why is, what do customers want? And then work uh, okay. ourselves back. 